right, next weekend, the 57th year for the Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston Powered Auto Rama returns to the IX Center uh, the 31st through the 2nd, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If a piston makes it go, it's in this show. Tickets, details, all the info. Go to pistonpowershow.com. I'll give you the last four pack I have this week for next weekend. Four tickets for caller 10. Good luck. 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. Are the days getting longer? Or does this show just make it feel that way? The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Five twenty all next week. I will have tickets for you for that Mudvayne tour. They're going out for about the first time in a decade. They're taking Coal Chamber with them. They got Guar and Butcher Babies and Nonpoint. It's going to be a hell of a show. It's a practically a festival, uh, and we'll play some of those bands tomorrow night. Two hours to midnight is our new metal show here on MMS uh, with yours truly, Corey Roddick, Pat Butler. Every week, uh, we throw a bunch of songs that we dig together. We play some local metal bands, no shortage of good ones in Northeast Ohio. Uh, Play some of your requests. So 10 to midnight every Saturday night. Tomorrow night's going to be week three. Got some great stuff lined up for you. Got a local band called The Static Wake that we're going to play for you. And then a bunch of other great stuff. So 10 o'clock until midnight, Saturday nights, two hours to midnight here in MMS. If you are a local band or you just want to shoot me an email and say, hey, play this band, uh, 2htm at wmms.com, and I'll post the playlists every week uh, at the um, 2 Hours to Midnight Facebook page. So that is Saturday night, 10 to midnight, and then Sunday morning, Bill and Poundcake are your hosts for the week in Cox. For now. That is 8 to 10 Sunday mornings. That is two hours of the best stuff from the week. For now, uh, Bill is uh, kind of quietly, maybe not so quietly, auditioning for new co-host I, for the weekend. Cut. I just want to, you know, I don't want him to get too comfortable. Sometimes he, he he's too reliable. He's too reliable. He says that himself. So you know, I, we'll see what happens. You want to keep him even more on his toes. Than you know he who might be real is. good at it? Who? Who listens to the show? Who's that? Who's always nice to me? Members only, Dave. He might be a good co-host for that. <laughs> there you go. Cavaliers uh, win in Brooklyn last night. Two in a row against the Nets. And Isaac Okoro buzzer beater. You sent me the, um, the Spanish play-by-play call. on yeah. Spanish radio. Uh, who is this guy that calls this? I, I don't even know. Rafael Alcalde. Oh, him. He's yeah. the bilingual play-by-play announcer for the Cavaliers. Falla Mitchell, recoge el rebote. Uy, ay, ay, guy. Mitchell, ¿qué pasó con eso? La tienen todavía los Cavs. Carries la ve con la pelota. Para Ocoro que lanza el triple en la esquina. ¡Sí! ¡Sí! ¡Ay, saco Coro! Acaba de darle la ventaja a los Cavs con siete décimas de segundo en el reloj. ¡Qué barbaridad los Cavaliers de Cleveland! Cavaliers de Cleveland. Uh, Did you hear him say Hasele Saber? Did you hear that? I just heard him say Isaac Okoro, and then everything else is just. He goes Hasele Saber, which is let them know. Oh yeah, that's let them know in Spanish. Let them know. Let them know he said Hasele Saber. <laughs> so yeah, I like that a lot. It's always interesting to me when there's people from other countries, uh, actors or whatever, anyone really, and they'll say, "How did you learn English?" And they go, I learned it watching television. Or, because uh, I, I got to tell you, I could probably listen to an entire game in Spanish. And I might be able to pick out a couple of things here and there. But I'm always fascinated by people who learn a language because they, I watch so much American television, I learned the language. Like, how do you even know where to start? I guess context clues are kind of your base when you're doing that. Well, but. if you're watching a show that you know what they're talking about, like if if... But how do you know what sounds mean what word? Context clues. I I can pick up on stuff. If I watch a show like Seinfeld or Friends or The Simpsons or something that I've seen a bunch of times where I know what's going on in the scene, I can start 
deciphering what words mean what. And there's still a lot of things that I'm lost on, but I can pick can up enough it. that like I can go, okay, that's that, that's this, and it starts to make sense to me pretty quickly. Like that's yeah. the one thing that benefited me a lot when I went to the Philippines is I picked up on the language way quicker than a lot of the other Americans. I just have that gift when it comes to language. Like because I, I hate not knowing what people are saying so much, it's the only time I really listen to people. Right. <laughs> when you're trying to figure it out. We well, um I- we only had like seven channels growing up. So we had like the three, five, eight, nineteen, forty three, fifty five, sixty one. So we had seven. Uh, 61. <laughs> we only had three channels growing up. I mean, we had seven. Well, because I was like, no, we had seven channels. Well, three, and five, and eight. Is three, like five, the eight oh, see, is yeah. like the number. Three, five, eight, 19, 25, 43, 55, 61. So eight channels. 61 was in Spanish, though. So it came through clear as day, but it was Telemundo. It was like Spanish soap operas, Spanish um, news. Like it was all in Spanish. And there'd be times where we would just sit there and watch Spanish soap Dude, operas. Dude, those so- Spanish like soap a- operas. They would have the Telenovela. Hottest, yes. They would have the hottest dudes in there, and they'd always be shirtless, or they'd yes. be like half there naked. Yes, they were very skimpy outfits, and yeah. it was oh, like, yeah. you could figure out the lingua. Like, you could watch <laughs> it, and you're not exactly sure, but you're like, you use your context clues, you know it's going to be some drama, someone I, cheating on someone. I'd watch Telemundo someone. with the sound off, because even just like the weather girls and stuff, even back then, were pretty hot, so yeah. I, could, I could get some work But we done. had the sound on. We would like fall asleep to Spanish just, channel. <laughs> But it's like I think of somebody like Mila Kunis, who's Ukrainian, and her parents, she was born in Russia, and they moved here from Russia or Ukraine or whatever. When she was like eight years old, she's like, I didn't know any English until like all she knew was Russian until she was nine or ten years old. Listen to her now. She doesn't have an accent. I mean, she's been speaking in English a long time, and I'm sure American schools help. But and somebody like Schwarzenegger, who never lost his accent. Well, it's <clears throat> it's when, interesting when you it is interesting the accents when you come here at a young age and also there's there's work I think I think Schwarzenegger leaned into the accent because it was you think part so? of who he is but when you are a child and you are learning it's more likely that you're not going to have an accent because you're you're mimicking more and you can just pick up on stuff more so my friend Raj he doesn't have he's from India. He learned to speak English uh, when he went to, like, I'm. he, he kind of always spoke it, but he learned it when he went to school in the Middle East and then went to college here, and he doesn't really have an accent until he's around other Indian people and he's a little bit drunk, and then it starts coming out, and it's very funny yeah. how it becomes more uh, noticeable when he's had a few drinks and is around other people with the accent. Alan, my son-in-law moved here from Russia when he was 15. He learned English from watching Friends. Yeah. Hmm. We are on break. <laughs> um, let me show you this guy. <clears throat> you see the video of the city councilman in Florida who got scammed with fake names on the oh. roll call? That's, who I gave him this roll call? Uh, I don't know. But this is a, I, I don't know the exact context of this. This is like a local city council meeting. A rep in Florida got scammed with some fake names. Now, I'm going to show this to you uh, if you're watching the live stream because watching his face when he realizes what's going on is kind of part of the best part. Uh, Representative Robinson, just on the Florida channel, just local cable access where they will air these things, and he's doing some kind of roll call. And this was a few days ago, about uh, 1030 in the morning. Florida Station of Counties waves in opposition. Pamela Birch Fort, Florida State Conference of NAACP branches waves in opposition. Anita Dick (laughs) is an opponent. (laughs) See his face? And the girl next to him, the legislative aide is probably like, oh, my God. Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) Waves in opposition. Holden Hiscock. (laughs) It's also a uh, Jimmy, only Jimmy, Florida, Florida, apartment association. Yeah, Keith. only Jimmy, but uh, Anita Dick <clears throat> and Holden Hiscock uh, were not there. They voted in absentia. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I just don't, uh, you, 
What? You don't read beforehand. Like, you don't know. You did the first time no, you see the paper. No, they don't. Well, why would they? I mean, these people are probably busy. So an aide hands them some paper, and they look at it. Everybody's getting fired, man. Right. Everybody's getting fired. Well, people were making fun of all these old congressmen for grilling the TikTok guy. And I get where they're coming from because a lot of them don't understand how that kind of stuff works. Some of them kind of do. But these aides write these things. They, You know, the 22-year-old intern is the one that's researching Stuff. So when these congressmen are up there, it's mostly grandstanding anyway. Um, if they're smart, they're leaning on their Gen Z interns or whatever to pour over this stuff. But they're just handing them sheets of paper, or handing them questions to ask. These guys aren't pouring over reams and reams of information about TikTok. They're giving them bullet points and then sending them out there and hoping they can sink or swim. If you move before puberty, you typically will not keep your native accent, someone said. Well, yeah, listen, I imagine, <clears throat> I don't know if it's that specific, but but to Bill's point, the younger you come over, the easier yeah. it would be to. Well, you're just more susceptible to it. I mean, that's you're why. Still, you're still learning any language when you're younger. Yeah, and that's why it's, I think it's interesting and cool that Nora is in Spanish class in first grade. Yeah. I think that makes way more sense than having people start learning a second language in high school in high school yeah i think that i feel like that's maybe the standard now but that so yeah. that guy got uh screwed with uh, uh holden hiscock and uh <laughs> anita dick there. This is why Florida's awesome. mm -hmm. you can leave us messages anytime you like on the Alan Cox Show After Hours line, it is 216-986-8903. Listen to the podcast, heard you guys talking about a lawyer speaking in tongues. Took me back to an old joke. Very old. You probably heard it, but I'll tell it. Uh, what do you call a lawyer who gives his deposition in tongues? That never gets old. Oh, that old one. Gene from Parma. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. That does never get old, does it? Gene from Parma. Oh, he got us. He got us. <laughs> Might as well have been Holden Hiscock checking in. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> So, um, uh, yeah, we have a lot of bureau chiefs out there in the great state of Utah, and they unveiled a new flag, a new state flag. And, of course, some people are already up in arms, not literally, it is Utah, you know, clarify, mm -hmm. um, over this flag. They don't see why they need a new flag. It's a big blue thing that's got, uh, the, the, it's blue on top, white on the bottom, and in the middle is kind of a zigzag line that is meant to signify the mountains of Utah. And in the middle, there's a crest with kind of a stylized beehive. There's a five-pointed star and uh, trying to represent the mountains. And they took submissions from people, thousands of submissions. And uh, they've got a little beehive on there because I guess uh, Utah known for, is Utah known for honey? That's a symbol that they know. use for the, so they have the Deseret News mm -hmm. and it's got that symbol. So that, that makes me think of Mormon stuff. Oh, okay. Because that's like a Mormon magazine. All right. Well, maybe that's what they were doing there. Uh, of course, Utah Republicans called the beehive symbol just another woke attempt to curry favor with Beyonce fans. <laughs> so even mean. <sighs> Mary. I know, I get it that she's the bee. I just. It's so, uh, so aggravating. No, that was it. I was making it. It was a joke. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave I now. See, this is what really happens. Did. When you... I swear to God. Because you can't tell anymore. <gasps> Because everything yeah, I is so. I swear on my every, life, I was like, I cannot. Of course, because everything's so absurd that you can't tell anymore. This is what happens I really when you show truly, up three days a week. Yes, I truly <laughs> didn't know that you were joking. Because I'm like some old Republican. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Although, you got to hand it to the parent in Utah who demands that the Bible 
be banned from libraries because it's full of porn. What's good for the goose, good for the gander. Uh, Right-wingers now are really, really leaning into the Orwell. They want books banned. They don't want people learning history, the whole bit, right? And so these uh, Utah parents say, hey, you know how much gross stuff is in the Bible? This should be removed from school libraries. There's going to be a book banning law in Utah. Then the Bible has to be on that list. No Bibles in schools. All right. Do you want to know why they use the beehive there in uh, Utah? Mm -hmm. Uh, When Brigham Young and the Latter-day Saints arrived in Salt Lake Valley in July of 1847, Young chose the name Deseret for their new home and the beehive as its emblem, symbolizing the kind of cooperative work that would be required to make the desert bloom. Oh, okay. So so it's a hive mind thing. (laughs) Everybody think the same. Work together. Think the same. So it's got nothing to do with uh, the B-52s. No. I mean, that would have been good, too. So, yeah, these Utah... They weren't weren't around in 1847. (laughs) Neither was Beyonce. It didn't Mm -hmm. go past me. (laughs) Oh, well. So these parents are like, yeah, you guys want to ban books? Ban the Bible. Right. Because under this code, it has no serious value for minors because, given your definition, it's pornographic. There's incest and onanism and bestiality and rape and infanticide. You want your kids reading about this? Another thing happening in Utah, they are the first state to have a law requiring parents' consent for minors to use social media. Yeah, I saw that too. That's, I think that's going to spread across. I, I don't. There's no way. You can't enforce it. Kids will always find, even if you were just doing this in your own home, even if it wasn't a law, if you were doing it in your own home, there would be no way. Kids will always find they'll a way around an, it. They'll yes. create an app that is bypasses all that. Something. Actually, it's just a business. So it's like, oh. Most parents don't even know what a Finsta is, and mm-hmm. that's not even new. Taking extra steps just to, this is my pseudo Twitter. Yeah. And it posts to my actual Twitter page. So whether or not they'll actually get the Bible banned in Utah, oh, let me take a guess. They won't. Mm. But, uh, you know, listen, there's instructions on how to perform abortions in it. So, uh, But these parents are like, you guys want to ban a lot of books that aren't even remotely uh, offensive. So throw the Bible on the list. So we'll see what happens there in Utah. This week in Jesus. The Bill Squire Friday Get Down. You don't want to sleep on that. That is how we get the weekend going around these parts. That is on the way. And if you want to text for something, 35192. We'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. 